Good morning on today's news broadcast, a fire NATO, winning Govs, and a friendly North Korea. Plus local sports, weather, and more. APSU TV News starts right now. Good morning, thanks for joining us. I'm Brandon Crossland. And I'm Megan Stamps. September is Suicide Awareness Month, and APSU's Angela Peterson asked students around campus the importance of awareness. This month is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and in honor of that, I talked to students on campus asking them about their experiences with depression and anxiety. Um, I have anxiety that I struggle with a lot. Um, I also have borderline personality disorder, so that makes going day to day with emotions pretty difficult. It was really hard at first and finding a balance is really difficult, but what I do, I rely pretty heavily on safe spaces and places that I feel like I can unwind and really let loose. A lot of times we do everything that we can to escape the feelings that we feel. And instead of doing that, sometimes it's okay to embrace it and be like you know this is how I feel right now and it sucks but if you just let yourself feel those things and you let yourself feel okay with getting help with that then it can be a lot easier in the healing process. We're, we're kind of taught from a very young age that if you're going to cry you can't be loud about it it can't be for an exorbitant amount of time and if at all, make sure there's like a woman around to comfort you. Well, for guys, it's just because we're told like not to be like that. So we're just don't. And I think in like today's age, we're all like more aware that everybody's going through something. So we try more so to be helpful to one another that we neglect ourselves. It's important not to avoid your feelings because eventually they do come, they do come for you, they do catch up with you. Uh, no matter how good you are at delaying the inevitable, the inevitable is still in fact the inevitable. Everybody needs to be here. Like the times where you feel like there's absolutely nothing else happening in the world, like you wouldn't matter. I promise you there's three or four people in the world that you would matter to. Even if it's for a millisecond, something that you do is going to help somebody else too. And you might not be able to do it right now, but and you might not feel like it's right now, but it's gonna happen in the future. You just have to believe that you wanna be a part of that future too. One million people commit suicide every year worldwide. If you or someone you know is feeling suicidal, please call 1-800-273-8255. This is Angela Peterson, APSU TV News. We often hear about concerns over our Second Amendment rights, but what about the First Amendment? The First Amendment guarantees the right of free speech, a free press, freedom of religion, freedom to peaceably assemble, and the right to petition our government. Some APSU students found out this week, though, what it would be like to lose all or some of even these rights. protesters from our country confiscate their signs. So students, when they come into our event, they're going to have the option um, to waive their First Amendment rights in order to get free food and a t-shirt. And if they don't do that, then they don't, don't get that because we can't have both in a free society. So now we got to lead a country because we want to protest. We're just trying to, my friends are just trying to get their word out about how stupid this country is. All newspapers that have been distributed. There is no freedom of the press in this country. Come on. Come on. Come on. Police, there is no freedom of religion allowed in our country. Please remove the people distributing religious material and confiscate all materials that have been distributed. It's very frightening. <laughs> it's very scary, honestly, just having people chase you. Like my my constitutional rights, especially the First Amendment, is very important to me. I mean, we have these rights for a reason, and 
we need to use them if we can. Hey, it's not me. It's not mine. That was him. That was all him. That was all. Nope. Nope. That's all him. Take him to jail. Take him to jail. Not me. I think it's an eye opener for sure, but it's also a reminder that we do have those rights outside of this little space. You have to weigh your rights. So when you came to be here and you asked for a hot dog, I, I wasn't done. When you came to be here and you asked for your rights, I had the right to tell you no to a hot dog. And she stole your hot dog. So if you have a complaint, talk to them up there. You shouldn't have signed the paper. Read before you sign something. Honestly, it's a pretty cool experience. Like, if life was really like this, I couldn't do it. Because I. I'm going to another country. I feel like it's not fair because like we want to represent ourselves well and people always have the stereotypes with us so if we're not able to speak about what we really are and just going to keep having punishment to our names. I think it's going great. I think people are realizing what freedoms that we have and they're being taken away. People are actually playing along with it, which is awesome. You can't do this. No. Freedom, freedom of the press. Freedom of the press. No freedom of the press here. The First Amendment rally was sponsored by the student sorry, the school's student publications and was in observance of Constitution Day, which honors the signing of the U.S. Constitution. Well, protesters in Memphis are outraged with police who reportedly turn off their body cams before shooting a 25-year-old man. Police Director Mike Rawlings says pol policy was not followed. All three officers have been relieved of duty with pay, but some people Wednesday night said they want the officers fired and charged. CNN's Kristen Holloway reports. We ain't gonna go follow the protocol. Protesters showing up in large numbers, asking why Memphis police officers turned off their body cameras and dash cams before 25-year-old Martavius Banks was shot. Marion Denton is the organizer. Memphis police don't get no answers for this. His body cam was off. They were shut off. So what, 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 what are we supposed to do, sit here and just let this happen? Black Lives Matter! Denton says he comes in peace, but tonight he wants answers and accountability. The police officer, instead of being relieved from duty, they need to be fired and charged. They need to be fired and charged, and it's not going to stop until they be fired and charged. At one point, things got heated when Kedron Franklin walked up to officers and started yelling in their face. MPD then put up barricades. Rawlings get on the news and said that those cameras were turned off and he's not confident that the policy was followed. That's an admission of guilt. I'm mad as hell and I can't take it no more. The group was passionate and their message was clear. Then they need to pay their officers a, a, a higher wage, give them some training, stop the racism, stop the corrupt uh, police officers from just get rid of them. A small plane crashed Wednesday night at the Tri-Cities Airport in Blountville, Tennessee. An airport spokesperson says the plane was carrying two people. They were transported to the hospital with unknown injuries. According to the FAA, the crash happened around 8 p.m. They said the plane landed 500 feet short of runway 23. The FAA also says the plane is a Velocity Experimental amateur-built aircraft. Records show the plane is registered to Richard Knapp of Seal, Alabama. The FAA is investigating the crash. Several storms passed through northeastern Ohio Thursday, causing a tornado warning in some areas. Here's a look of some of the damage left behind in Middlefield Township, Geauga County. Sheriff's Office said there were wires down and a pole snapped. At least one structure was damaged. The National Weather Service has not confirmed that there was a tornado and there were no injuries reported. So for our five day forecast, as you see here that we're gonna have a little bit of severe thunderstorms going on. We're gonna have with a 91 and as far as that that's during the day, 66 at night, 70 tomorrow and 63 at night. And then on Sunday, we're gonna have 74 with a lot of chance of thunderstorms and everything. So then on 67, they're gonna be that night. And then as far as Monday, it's gonna be 79 degrees during the day. And then at night, 69 with a chance of thunderstorms as well. And then 79, degrees on Tuesday and then uh, tonight that night is going to be 66. Still ahead Bryce Beeman tells us what's happening in the world of sports. News will be right back. Every year we lose 400 people to carbon monoxide poisoning. 170 of these incidents are from non-automotive consumer products. Poisoning can help to be prevented by installing a CO device in your home, having your appliances serviced by a qualified technician, even having your mechanic regularly touch up on your exhaust systems. Never 
have your vehicle running in a garage that is connected to a home or have the garage door closed. How will you lead to a better future? Will you lead through life-changing innovations or will your leadership shine through the quality of your work? Success is defined by the individual. So it's time to think about the person you want to be and where you will learn to lead through excellence. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. Welcome back. In an emotional moment, Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban apologized to the victims of sexual harassment among his team's employees. This after an investigation finds a long history of improper workplace conduct within the Dallas Mavericks spanning more than 20, more than 20 years. CNN's Lindsay Sar Zar Zarniak reports. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban is one of the most visible NBA owners. He is known for his work ethic, his success as a businessman, not limited to professional basketball. But this was a side that we don't often see. He was emotional. He admitted dropping the ball that he should have paid attention to the toxic culture revealed by this investigation. Cuban has now agreed to donate $10 million towards women's organizations that promote leadership and those that fight domestic violence in response to allegations against his team of sexual harassment and misconduct towards women over the past two decades. That action in response to the findings of an investigation launched after a Sports Illustrated article released in February described the Mavericks culture as one that devalued women and was rife with, quote, predatory sexual behavior. Among the findings of the investigation, improper workplace conduct that included lewd comments, forcible touching, and kissing. Cuban will not face any additional discipline. He did talk to ESPN's Rachel Nichols yesterday and he admitted his own mistake of not recognizing this behavior. I'm just sorry I didn't recognize it. And I just, you know, hope that out of this, you know, we'll, we'll be better. The pain that people went through, the pain that people shared with me as this happened, the tears that I saw. It just, it hurt. And what, the way I felt was nothing compared to the way they felt. Besides significant errors in judgment, the investigation found no wrongdoing by Mark Cuban. Back to you. For more information on what's happening in the world of sports, let's now take it over to Bryce Beeman for a look at your Gov Sports update. Bryce? It was a pretty winning weekend this week in Gov Sports. Let's start with football. The Govs won big against Moorhead State last weekend, 78-40. to The Govs' offense was hot, setting school records for points scored, touchdowns scored, and total yardage. Junior Kinsel Williams added to the scoring party with four touchdowns. Williams and quarterback Jeremiah Oatswell became the first governor's rushing tandem to both run for 100 yards in the same game since 2013. The Govs are currently on a two-game winning streak and will open up conference play this weekend on the road against UT Martin at 2 p.m. and is also available on ESPN+. Now, Austin B. Soccer had a great start to conference this past weekend. With senior weekend going on, the Govs were able to pull out an overtime 1-1 to -one tie against Belmont on Friday and pull out a 1-0 to win against Tennessee Tech on Senior Day Sunday. Sophomore Claire LaRose scored both goals for her team and was also OVC Offensive Player of the Week. The Govs extended their 21 home game winning streak, but will have to play on the road this weekend against SIUE on Friday at 7 p.m. and then turn around to play Eastern Illinois at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Now, football and soccer aren't the only sports who had winning weekends. The volleyball team also traveled to the Rice Adidas Invitational, where they beat SEC's school Ole Miss. The Govs pulled out a 3-1 win against McNeese as well, but fell short to Rice 1-3. After graduating some talented seniors, the Govs have continued to come out hot this season with only two losses so far this season. For the 17th time total, Kristen Stucker was OVC Setter of the Week, while Brooke Moore was recently named OVC Offensive Player of the Week. The Govs start conference play this weekend against SEMO on Friday at 6.30 p.m. and again Saturday at 11 a.m. against UT Martin. Now, the Lady Govs tennis team had a successful year last season despite ending with a heartbreaking loss in the OVC Conference Championship. But with five of the six returning and two fresh faces for the Governors, it's a promising year for the team. Last weekend, they kicked off their fall season in Clarksville, hosting six teams in the APSU Fall Invitational. It was a successful weekend for the women, and they had three ladies in the semifinals of the top flight, as well as a 
All-Governor Final, where two-time Conference of the Year Lydia Yanes garcia took down German teammate Fabien Schmidt. Now, Austin P women's golf team scored a runner-up finish in Moorhead State's tournament. M Monday marked the start of the tournament where the girls played 36 holes. They battled through the tough weather conditions day, one to shoot 319-304, and set of a stellar second round of 73 from senior Taylor Goodley. The sun came out to shine on the girls on Tuesday as they finished round three with a 313 team total. Freshman Taylor Dedman's final round of 73 helped the team hold on to their second place ranking behind Cincinnati. Both Dedman and freshman Shelby Darnell have traveled to the team's two tournaments so far, making a name for the underclassmen. Our Let's Go Pete website says Darnell and our own Megan Stamps, a junior, tied for a second lowest par three scoring averages in the whole tournament, each averaging 3.08. The girls' rest will be short-lived, however, because the team travels to Glencoe, Alabama to play in the Jacksonville State Tournament starting next Monday. That's all we have for sports. APSU TV News will be right back. Are you prepared for life outside of college? Probably not yet. No. Austin Peay's Career Services is there to help you transition to post-grad life. I've had some friends use Career Services, but I've never used it myself. Whether you need assistance finding a major or preparing for your future career, this free service has all of the tools to guide you. We try to equip students and alumni um, with the tools that they need to go through that job searching process. They built their resume and it gave like complete relief off of me because I was able to be able to walk out of there and be confident in my next interview. The entire reason of going to college is so that you can actually get a job. So there's resources that are available to you in career services are second to none on campus. It's the best place to go to. Stop by room 210 in the Morgan University Center or visit www.apsu.edu slash careers. Take the first step into your future today. Welcome back everyone. Residents of a Washington, D.C. apartment complex for seniors are wondering whether a massive fire on Wednesday could have been stopped earlier. D.C.'s fire chief appears to agree, saying the building's fire alarms weren't working at the time. CNN Sam Ford reports. As you stood and looked up at the building today, you could see the sky through windows on the top floor because the roof was a casualty in yesterday's massive fire at this 160-unit senior citizens building. The big deal here was that the horns did not work. D.C. Fire Chief Gregory Dean confirmed what many residents said yesterday. I saw the firefighter pull the alarm. He didn't go off. He said start knocking on doors. The chief said the fire started in an inaccessible attic area and burned the roof for some time not affecting smoke detectors or sprinklers down below. Since there was no smoke uh, on the first floor, second floor, third floor, and very light smoke on the fourth floor, the, the system hadn't gone off. The chief said there was no problem with the detectors and sprinklers once they had a chance to work. It was the general alarm system. We inspected it a year ago. Uh, it was inspected by housing authority in January, I was told yesterday, and it was inspected, the alarm system was inspected in April. Baffling to residents like 75-year-old John Russell, who'd lived here since the building opened. Fire alarms, they have tests and tests and tests, and the one day that they were supposed to go off, they didn't. So I guess they'll figure that out sooner or later. CNN reports that Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh on Tuesday took part in a prep session for a hearing to address sexual assault allegations. It comes after a woman went public with allegations that Kavanaugh assaulted her at a party years ago when the two were in high school. Kavanaugh denies the allegation. He and his accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, were invited to testify at a hearing set for this coming Monday. But the future of that hearing is now unclear after Ford said she wants the FBI to investigate her claim first. CNN's Abby Phillip reports. An after midnight vote sends a $1.3 trillion spending package to the president's desk. The Senate voting 65 to 32 early Friday morning. The result is legislation that neither side sees as perfect, but which contains a host of significant victories and important achievements on behalf of the American people. The omnibus keeps the government funded through September with more military and domestic spending. 
Senator Rand Paul, as usual, was one of the last holdouts on the bill, delaying the vote with a procedural move. He spent hours Thursday criticizing the way it was made public. Had they started on Monday, they'd be done. I can't stop anything unless they don't do their job and they wait till Thursday night to present a bill or Friday. So it's really their fault for not being prepared. If they were prepared, they can blow by me in a, in a day. The repeated instances of late night votes and tight deadlines when it comes to funding the government are wearing on some senators. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's juvenile. This is a juvenile process that we go through every time we do one of these. And with this bill only funding the government through September, there's another funding deadline just over the horizon. Could we in the future possibly try to resolve these things at a decent hour or come back the next morning and vote? I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. While their political mo romance may still be in the honeymoon stage, but North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in seem ready to take things to the next level. CNN's Will Ripley has more. Their political romance may still be in the honeymoon stage, but North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in seem ready to take things to the next level. During a summit filled with smiling photo ops in Pyongyang, both leaders touted a new era of peace and cooperation, joint economic, transportation, and health care projects, even a bid to co-host the 2032 Summer Olympics. The North and South also signed a detailed agreement to end all military hostility. North Korea promised to shut down a key missile test site and its young beyond nuclear facility, even saying international inspectors will be allowed to watch. But a vaguely worded caveat says the U.S. must take corresponding measures. We can assume that to be um, a declaration ending the Korean War or other um, steps. Steps that could include a longtime North Korean demand that U.S. troops scale down and eventually pull out of the Korean Peninsula, a traditional deal breaker for Washington. It does not move the ball forward at all. We're still in the same place. President Donald Trump trying to project momentum in his own dealings with Pyongyang. We had uh, very good news from North Korea, South Korea. Crediting some of the progress on his personal relationship with Kim Jong-un. Plans are in the works for a possible second summit with the North Korean leader. We're talking, it's very calm. He's calm, I'm calm. Trump is citing North Korea's lack of recent missile tests as a positive sign, despite a months-long stalemate in denuclearization talks. North Korean state media this week placing all the blame on U.S. demands, once again calling them gangster-like. President Moon will try to salvage the situation, acting as mediator when he visits the U.S. next week. Kim Jong-un says he'll soon be the first North Korean leader ever to visit Seoul, a chance for more photo ops and more promises of a bright, unified future. What happens next could clarify if Washington and Seoul are still on the same page when it comes to Pyongyang or if the U.S. is beginning to look like a third wheel. Will Ripley, CNN. Now in today's Health Minute, sometimes fast food is the only option, but can you still be healthy even if you grab something from the drive-thru? CNN's Mary Maloney explains in today's Health Minute. You want about half your plate to be vegetables. Look at the sides, look at the salads, any fried toppings we want to avoid, especially breaded fried chicken, which is a frequent fast food salad topping. We want to avoid oversized portions of cheese. One portion of cheese is about the size of a domino or three dice. And consider the portion of the salad dressing too. About one tablespoon, maybe two, and usually an oil-based salad dressing would be your best bet, uh, instead of a whole packet, which might be a quarter cup. Steer clear of fried options and don't order a soda with your meal. Are you, are you new? Tailor your choices if you're frequently eating out to what's healthy. Beachfront hotels may make a great getaway, but let's face it, overzealous pelicans can sometimes be a nuisance. One San Diego hotel came up with a solution to this problem that is straight out of Darwin. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. A California beachfront hotel with a bird problem came up with a unique solution. Hire a bigger bird. 
this is Timber. You'll find her patrolling the skies above San Diego's famous Hotel Del Coronado. Her job is to keep seagulls and other birds from pestering hotel guests. This bird bouncer is equipped with a radio transmitter and even has her own hawkmobile. The hotel has used birds of prey for years to control unwanted wildlife, but for Timber, it's all in a day's work. As the Red Sox make their way to the American League East Championship, three friends in Boston found what they say is a good luck charm. The men were driving in Somerville, Massachusetts when they spotted something in the road. It turned out to be the official Red Sox AL East Champion banner, which had fallen off a delivery truck on its way to Fenway Park. It may have been an accident, but these three fans see it as a good omen. I'm going to give him back the banner, and that's going to be the good luck charm. Ye got to be kidding me. It's International Talk Like a Pirate Day again. Can you believe it's already been a yar? It's a day to cast ye differences aside and snarl with a smile instead. Shiver me timbers, mate. Mm, I've heard better. Shiver me timbers. Pretty sure that's just Irish. Oh, Yo ho, now you're talking. For take a look at this, I'm Jeremy Roth with a capital R. We uh, had to mention uh, recently happened that uh, Amber Kent, our previous producer, uh, was engaged to her fiance, uh, Universal Studios, I believe. Yes, I've definitely seen that engagement. The Harry Potter. They were engagement. at Hogwarts, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, the ring was on a wand. So right. I don't understand that fandom. <laughs> but I, I hey, hey, no, that's an automatic yes to any proposal if is you're it, proposed to that way. I think that if you're in the Harry the, Potter fandom, gotcha. that's that is a yes. the perfect way for Amber to get engaged, I think, as well. Okay. And uh, she's, she's doing very well for herself over in the uh, Knoxville area, Tri-City area. There. Yeah, she's definitely As a producer. Doing, yeah, she's doing great. I've seen a couple of her newscasts that she's been doing, and they have just been phenomenal. Uh, we definitely uh, would like to see that sometime. <laughs> uh, we, we were going to mention today about the uh, fire NATO in British Columbia and uh, Canada, and uh, it was like 100, 100 feet in the air, very... I can't and, even imagine and, that. Uh, scary, but impressive at the same time. Exactly. I know. I can't. I, I've I've seen them before. It's one of those that you'll never actually think you're going to see it in real life. But I've right. seen it on the internet. But just try to imagine that actually oh in gosh. person, though. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> I don't know. That's I all. Can't imagine that. <laughs> that, that's all the time we have for today. Be sure to join us in the interaction by liking us on Facebook at APSU TV Clarksville and Instagram at APSU underscore TV. And thanks for watching another edition of your Gov News Weekend Update. And as always, let's, let's go, go P! P.